Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Game, and today we are starting a playthrough of a new game. We're going to be playing Carrier Battles, the Guadalcanal campaign over here, and this is a game that you guys have alerted me to, and that I'm very excited to play because this is obviously, bit, obviously about carrier warfare in World War II, and that's you know one of the things that I'm really, really into. So yeah, let's start the game over here. We're going to start a scenario of Wake. This is a slightly a historical scenario. We're going to go right into that and I'm going to explain a little bit what this is about, how we played um, as we go in. But, what I really like about this game is it's very simple to play, but it does have an extreme depth in terms of gameplay. So, there are a couple of scenario infos here. Um, I think the biggest one is that Wake, historically, was of course invaded very initially by uh, Japanese forces just right after uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor. They were repulsed in that initial attack, so what the Japanese had to do is they, they diverted a couple of uh, their carriers on the way back from Pearl Harbor and they did start an attack from Wake by the Kido Botai, by the main Japanese forces in, or by the main Japanese carrier forces. And they basically softened that up in, enough um, for the resistance to be broken and for the rest of the Imperial Japanese Navy to basically take over the island. So that's the historical background to this. There was actually Task Force 14, which I, with I think Saratoga, um, that was attempting to reinforce Wake Island. Um, and it was coming in to basically support the US forces there, but it was a little bit delayed and I think there must be some historical forces. Yeah. So Task Force 14 is carrying supplies, troops, aviation replacements for Wake, uh, whereas Task Force 11 is trying to raid the Marshall Islands as a diversion. Now historically Task Force 14 was slowed by refueling and storm and that is basically why they couldn't help out Wake um, and ultimately at that point then Wake was um, surrendering and yeah, basically that just was it for, for that attempt. Now we're going to try to replay that, I'm just going to turn off the hex grid over here for a second, um, and basically we're going to try to uh, defend Wake here, and we the our historical scenario here is that Task Force 14 is actually in the vicinity as the Japanese are trying to raid Wake. I don't know whether we're going to be able to do that, um, at this point in the war our forces are much much weaker. Uh, than the Japanese. The Kidobutai, the main Japanese carrier force, really at this point in the war ruled supreme and sadly the American carrier forces were not really up to, to the same standards um, in terms of training because they just, yeah, they just hadn't trained that much. So this is going to be an extremely tough scenario to play from the American side. But let's uh, look at the forces, let's look at the map, let's look at how this game is played. So I think this is this is kind of nice. Just the the just the C. It's it's really lovely. I think it's based with the based on the Unity engine. So let's look at what we've got. We've got three task forces here uh, by these denoted by these little blue icons over here. We've got Task Force Eleven down here with Lexington, a couple of heavy cruisers, a couple of destroyers, and so on. So that I think is very nice. We've got these guys down here, um, and they should be ready to go and raid the Marshall Islands over there. Then we've got Task Force 14 over here, which is split into two subgroups. We've got uh, Task Force 14 itself over here with Saratoga, so another carrier on our, uh, on our side, CVs are carriers. And then we've got a couple of destroyers and one supply ship uh, that we do want to bring into Wake, which is over here. These things down here are, are Japanese bases. They've just taken these guys over. There's a smaller airbase over here and a larger airbase with four runways um, on Kwajalein. So this is what we're going to try to raid. We know that there are some task forces, some naval task forces with transport ships down here by the Japanese because they've just landed over here. And they, we at least suspect that these guys must still be around. So we're going to try to strike them over here. But we're also going to try to resupply uh, wake, which we un which we know is going to come under further attack. We know the Kidibutai is in the area. Um, I think historically it was coming in from the north, uh, but the scenario description sort of indicated that that might not be the case this time around. Um, let's display the ranges over here because this is hex based, and you can basically see just how far away that is. And just to get you a feeling about how this game is placed, it's obviously turn uh, based, it's hex based. So we've got. 
Various turns. One turn is one hour to 20 minutes, uh, at least during the day. I'm not sure whether it's uh, the same at night. Um, but yeah, that basically means we have 11 turns per day um, and then seven turns per night. Each turn has a couple of action phases. So every 20 minute interval is being modeled over here. Basically, uh, the speed is mostly such that uh, we can move one of our, one. We can move our task forces by one hex each turn, so up to eleven hexes um, in a day, and then we can also uh, and and basically the intermediate um, phases are just there for the air operations. So let's start by looking at task force eleven down here. You can see it's around over here. Uh, we're currently around sixteen, no, pretty much exactly sixteen hexes away from this airbase over here. It's currently 4 a.m. So at 4 a.m. we can't yet fly, but we can start to make preparations for the actual day phase um, to commence then at, I think, 6 a.m. or so. 5.20? I don't know. Yeah, 5.20 is the actual start of the day. So basically we get one turn here uh, to set up the first things that we need to do during the day. Now, let's go to the air operations over here. And this screen I don't really like the looks of it, but it's very functional. So let's see what is going on here. We've got three bases. We've got the Task Force 14, we've got Task Force 11, and we've got Wake itself. Down here, we've got the planes that are currently in the respective base. So for example, Task Force 11 here has five fighters. That uh, represents groups of four fighters each, I think. So basically that's 20 fighters, but five counters uh, of fighters. Eight counters of dive bombers and four uh, counters of torpedo bombers. These things do have a, a couple of numbers. The most important one is the one in the um, lower left down here and that is basically the range that these guys have. And that is the um, direct range. So this is how far these guys can fly. Now if you want to do a mission you basically have to take uh, half of that number. So for example if you can uh, fly 16 hexes basically to go somewhere and return uh, basically, you only have an effective combat range um, of 8 hexes. You can push that up a little bit, but you will start to risk losing some airplanes as these guys are coming back. So, basically, you can see we would have a range here of up to 8. So, we are not really in range of this base yet. So, what we need to do is move a little bit to the left over here. And I'm actually going to start here by moving Task Force 11 a little bit. Can I get you to move? Yeah, I can. Oh, but, but I do think I need to turn on the hexes so that I can see where you can actually move. But that's fine. Yeah, so these guys over here um, are now under cloud cover. And cloud cover, we haven't really talked about that, or, but it is very, very important. So this is going to give us some benefits here in terms of not being spotted by the enemy. There's overcast conditions, there are rain conditions, which would be even better. Um, and there are also storm conditions. Yeah, up over here we do have a storm. So that is really <laughs> very, very difficult for, for an enemy to spot us in if we are in that area. But of course we can't do any air operations if we are in a storm. And I think we do get some penalties in the rain as well. So basically we want to do a balance over here. I think we would like to come in under cloud cover. Um, but basically, yeah, basically we would... Um, try to be out of the cloud cover once we are starting our air operations. For now, it just doesn't make any sense to start our air operations because it's just way too far away. We can't really strike at that. So I think Task Force 11 is going to be fine as is. We don't need to do anything for now. We could shift and uh, we could do various things. We could do air searches. All of that would be super relevant, but I don't think we are going to do that for now. The only thing that I'm going to do for now is I'm going to take one one of our uh, fighters and I'm going to move it into a combat air patrol so it's going to take 80 minutes here for these guys to get ready that's basically because we are very early on in the day and they can't start before 5:20 anyway so yeah we're going to bring them up over here into the air so that we have just some cover over here it's not going to be the greatest cover but it is going to be fine what we could do is we could start preparing um, our forces here for a strike on the runway itself so that these guys would basically ready up and then they would be able to go. 
There's a bit of a problem there in that um, these guys, if they are, if they are too many units on the runway, basically that impedes uh, the operation. So we don't want to put too many um, people over here in a ready setup. But you can basically see that there are a couple of things, and you can see depending on the loadout, these guys would have a different range. So combat air patrol, if we were to fly that with the SBDs, which would be a horrible idea, uh, they would be able to last eight turns. If we have a drop tank formation, they have a range of sixteen. If we go for more bombs instead of drop tanks, uh, we would have a shorter range, but we would be able to do more damage. So let's look at that. I think this over here, the top left one, is the anti-air uh, strength, so against enemy aircraft. Then we've got the strength against ground units, and this point one. Um, over here, that would be two, so we'd be better able to strike at ground units. And up over here, you have this uh, strike capabilities against naval units. So two over here, and if we pack more bombs, that would be a three. We could also do a transfer to a different base. That's going to be 24. That's that's kind of far away. Um, and then we've got scouting missions. They can fly out to a difference uh, to a distance of 10 and then come back. So I suppose they're just going to carry more drop tanks and no bomb blowed out whatsoever. We could start preparing some of these guys, but I don't think that is something that we want to do right away. I mean, this is if we want to strike at this base. Basically, that's currently 15 hexes away. We only have an effective range of eight, even with drop tanks. So yeah, we would need to to move up quite a longer distance here until we're really in range of these guys. I don't think I want to have all of these units parked on the deck for now. So let's look at Task Force 14. You can see these guys are within 23 hexes of Wake. And that I think does um, put up a question of whether we want to go for a transfer over here. And I do think it makes sense to bring some troops um, over to Wake. We could move the torpedo bombers if we were within 20 axes. We are not really in 20 axes range. So I think what I want to do then is move up at least a couple of dive bombers to Wake Island. And I'm going to move four dive bombers in... No, I don't actually need to do it that way. I can actually move you over here in a strike pattern. That's slightly confusing because this is normally something that you use to do a naval strike or ground strike respectively. But if you do target a friendly base, that just means that these guys are going to fly over there. So we're going to get a little info over here. It's a distance to fly of 23. That's fine. We have 24 range. So that's going to be okay. Uh, the airstrike will be launched in several waves. I don't really care about that. And the next wave is going to start at 5.20, so the moment that they can. It's going to take them about a couple of hours to actually get over there. And they're going to land at uh, 1 a.m. So I think that's going to be fine. And they've got a couple of units there. So yeah, four. we're sending out four air wings, so that's good. And they're going to arrive pretty safely, so that's all right. It's going to take 80 minutes for all of these guys to be prepared. But again, it's something that we can do pretty easily here without any any uh, too big an issue. So I think that's that's perfectly fine. Question is, can I actually move one of you guys over there as well? Let's see, does that change this this mission whatsoever? Okay, some of these guys would not have enough supplies. So actually, I don't think I want that. So can I please move back the fighter? Yeah, okay, these guys only have a range of 20. So that's fine. We're going to fly in a couple of uh, SPDs right away, and later on we might replace them with a couple of torpedo bombers. So that is pretty much it that we want to do over here. Wake itself, let's look at that too, has only for the moment got a couple of fighters. There's not much that we need to do with these fighters, but yeah. I suppose one thing that we could do and should look at is the search capabilities. So there are basically some search patterns here um, from cruiser-based aircraft, and we can choose how that is set up. Currently we are covering 368 degrees. I don't think we need that. I think a coverage of 180 degrees or maybe 240, let's say 180 is going to be fine. So basically only a half circle there, um, and that does mean that you're going to go only fan out currently to the north, so it's starting west and then 180 degrees from that. I would like to shift it a little bit more sort of southwest so that we are covering this aspect. Um, and yeah, let's do it this way. So I think we are basically covering everything ahead of us with the cruisers over here. And I think we're going to do the same over here with you guys. And we are going to use one of our groups here 
um, of SPDs to actually go ahead and... Did I say one? Right, one group of SPDs is going to try to cover the uh, search pattern there. Right, let's advance time over here, just a scoot. That is, is advancing it by one phase. It's now, instead of 4, 4 a.m., it's now 4.20. Um, and that's fine, we can move one more unit. There's an um, there's a notification over here, a tip basically, um, to strike first. Yes, the Imperial Japanese Navy does have a huge, huge bonus. Our air groups are still preparing. We've got a couple of units here that are basically set up to move independently. I don't think we want to move them um, just one on one, but I, what, I, what I want to do here is these guys are gonna go on an autopilot Right now they would go to Wake itself. Um, I think it's going to be fine if we are just a little bit south of that. So basically, if we do go, let's say over here. No, sorry, not there. Autopilot. Autopilot. Can I can I move a little bit to the left here? Yeah. Let's, let's go a little bit south of Wake. And that's fine. So I don't need to move them every time. Uh, they are going to be auto move at the end of the turn. So that is fine, I suppose. And you know what? Before I forget anything over here, uh, let's actually ask these guys here to not the Task Force 11 down here. You guys are not going to be lying towards the enemy base. I would like to stay in the north over here and uh, do a strike sort of at a longer range there. And I think that's going to be fine. Right, let's advance time over here a little bit. Um, I don't think there's anything that we do need to be concerned about right now. But... Very soon it's going to be 5.20 and at that point uh, we can see that it's now proper daylight and that is very nice indeed. So everyone has movement points, that's okay. Um, I think I would like to move you up just so I know that you're in the cloud cover and you're not going north before uh, your time basically. And let's start the game over here. And here you can see some of the air operations that are starting. So. Yellow, you can see Task Force 14.1 is starting to sending out some float planes um, towards the southwest over here, I suppose, uh, whereas these guys are starting to uh, do some operations over here in this uh, area. And then we've got this group over here, um, which is currently flying from Task Force 14 to Wake. This is four SPDs, that's fine. Um, they're going to have a 100% chance of doing that. And they are basically on their way, which is, I think, very nice and dandy. So, yeah, let's uh, resume time over here. And you can basically start as to see how these um, operations or how these search patterns are being pushed out here in various directions. And that's pretty much all right. We don't need to be too concerned about any of the micromanagement of that. And um, what I potentially want to do, though, is... You guys over here, you can move a little bit there, and you're now nearly within 20 hexes of wake, right? So at 20 hexes, we could start to send out some of our units here. So that would be kind of nice. And I think what we're going to do then is we are going to prepare our dive bomb, uh, our torpedo bombs here to be on a transfer package. We're going to send all of you out there because I think you're going to be uh, very handy at wake. Uh, you have a very limited strike range, uh, but since we know that the enemy is coming towards wake, I think that's not going to be a problem. So we are going to send you on the deck. You're going to prepare there. It's going to take 20 minutes, so that's not very long. Um, but that means basically as soon as we get within range, you're ready to launch right away from the deck space, and that does save some time for us, which I think is going to be very useful. Uh, I think we're also going to send like two fighters over here, um, in that configuration as well. That might bring that up, but no, it's not. So, obviously, the more units that you've got, um, the longer it will take to do some of, of these operations. Uh, but all in all, we seem to be doing fine. Good, so you've done that. Uh, you're still very far away from being able to strike in that direction. I don't want to move you out of here, because that would mean you're out of cloud cover, so let's not move for the moment. Um, and you guys are going to move automatically, so I think that's going to be fine. Yeah, and now we can actually move you. So now you guys are within 20 hexes of wake. So that does mean that we're going to grab these guys here, which currently are set on this uh, runway over here. They would appear there at this very moment, uh, but I think that's fine. Uh, and we're going to move you towards the actual mission over here, uh, which is going to be to fly over there. 
and you're gonna do that and that's fine. That does leave us with very little in terms of strike, strike capabilities here uh, on the carry itself, but I think it's fine. We don't need to have too much of a strike package here. Now we know that there is a potential that um, some Japanese ships might be around. So I would very much like to have some combat air patrol over our ships. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move two of our fighters here of the Air Force. They are a little bit stronger. As you can see, they basically have a strength of two against enemy air forces. So they're twice as effective. And we're going to move two of these guys on the runway. And we're just going to keep them on the runway in a very ready strike position so that you can intercept any Japanese ships that you do meet. Right. Let's move up over here. And um, you can see it's going to take a little bit um, of a while for these guys here to start. Uh, doing their thing as well. Okay, you guys are now out of cloud cover, so I do want to move you up a little bit. Oh, well. There was a little bit of cloud cover left, wasn't there? No, there's not. Okay. Fine. Doesn't matter too much, but I would like to get into the rain. Um, how's the wind blowing, by the way? It's blowing to, I think, the east. So, that means basically you these clouds are going to move over you, which is going to be fine. Uh, but there's a big gap over here in the cloud cover, which I'm not very uh, comfortable with. On the other hand, it's nice that these clouds are going to come a little bit closer towards us over time. Yeah, and you can see ba basically now there are two groups that are flying to wake, so that's that's very lovely indeed. Don't need to be too concerned about any of this. I think we can just go ahead and advance time here a little bit. Doesn't matter really too much. We're not going to. We're not getting any info. Oh, we can move you down here, so let's move you into the rain. That makes it a lot less likely that you're going to be spotted, which is perfectly fine. Yeah, but other than that, I'm going to leave it to the AI to move up our forces whenever we need to. You're under cloud cover. That's that's fairly lovely. Nothing over there that is under cloud cover yet, so I think this is fine. We're just going to advance it a little bit over here until we are comfortable enough to potentially strike. But we do get a first notification over here, so we do see that there's an enemy scout over task force 11 so this is uh, sadly not represented on the map but we have seen a scout over here of the japanese forces and we do know that uh, based on the intel over here uh, this looks like a float plane so i think it's going to be land based this is not the kidobu tai but it is certainly cause for concern because we know that the japanese are going to have some uh, aircraft that are going to be based out of these two air bases over here so they could very easily strike at us and I'm not sure that we're going to be uh, able to withstand a huge strike so given that we are still kind of far out from our potential strike range um, and the land-based bombers of the Japanese are going to be pretty strong what I think what we need oh by the way this guy here has exhausted its fuel supply so I think what we're going to do is we are going to move at least two more units here into a combat air patrol stance. It's going to take about an hour uh, for these guys to be ready. Probably the Japanese are not going to be ready in an hour, so that's 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 fine. Um, but I would also like to move two guys here uh, onto the onto the runway so that they can immediately launch whenever they need to. So basically, we're currently landing one person. That is going to be happening immediately. We're going to get two guys here on the deck and we're going to have two in the air. So basically eight aircraft in the air, eight ready on the runway. So yeah, I think that's that's lovely and, and fine. Don't think we need to do anything with our strike aircraft for now in this group. You guys over here, I think you are pretty fine. So I'm, I'm happy about that. We are starting to push out some some search patterns over here. I don't expect anything to be right away over here, but yeah, let's see whether there is. I don't know. Okay, you guys have basically all moved up. That's fine. Let's move you into the cloud cover right away. There's a chance that enemy aircrafts would not be able to spot us right away. So yeah, I think that would be great if we could just uh, get that ready. Okay, you guys up there could move, but I don't think we need to. It's going to be sort of irrelevant where you are. There's no cloud cover anywhere, so that's fine. By the way, you can see uh, some of these search planes were coming back into the plane and they're going to be landing and then they're going to go out after they've landed. So I think that's going to be all right. We see uh, a continued presence of a scout plane over our base, uh, over our troops down there. That is definitely not great. I'm expecting a Japanese um, landing soon enough. Yeah, our search planes are now landing. That's, that's perfectly all right. 
you guys do move into the cloud cover please I want you to stay there as long as you can right uh, let's see whether we can get the first battle into this little episode over here yeah continue presence of this thing not great not much that we can do about it right you guys are fine where you are I think but nevertheless let's push you out a little bit the AI would do that so that's fine and then we've got you guys you're now landing at wake um, let's take a brief look at Awake. Has anyone landed over here yet? No, we've just got the fighters for now. But you can see that four guys are currently in the landing pattern. And they're going to be basically done this turn. So that's fine. Ooh, and we are seeing more scouts over here over Task Force 14.1. That is not great. Because Task Force 14.1 is um, basically these ships over here. And they're going to be extremely vulnerable. So I think what we would want to do is get a couple more planes here uh, ready on task force 14 uh, and get a little bit more of you guys into the air to see whether we can cover uh, all of our units second group is trying to land over there that's fine and you guys are still very far out so we can't do a strike there yet but that's all right more enemy scouts yeah okay so enemy scouts are doing a lot better here than we are but we've got our first couple of units here in wake so that's fine the first thing that I want to do is I want to send out, no, sorry, not all of you. I want to send out one of these air groups into a search pattern over here. It's going to take some while for you guys to be prepared. Uh, we're going to run a 360 degree search that I think is fine. We could do a fast search um, to push out faster, but I don't think we need to. Uh, and I do think it's going to be alright to just sort of search the immediate vicinity. And that's that's fine. Good, so you guys are going to be ready for that. And then the other thing that we could do is we can prepare, start to prepare these uh, SBDs to be ready to conduct a strike. Um, and I think the thing that we want to do here is we want to arm them with bombs. That's going to have a very limited range, but it's going to be very strong against enemy surface vessels. So I think that's fine. It's going to take you 20 minutes to do that. Doesn't, doesn't strike me as too long. So I think that's going to be all right. We could try to support you with an aircraft over here. But um, yeah, well, let's get one of you ready in an escort capability. So yeah, that that should have uh, leave you guys ready. So if there's any any thing that we can strike, that would be fantastic. You guys are not even close to being able to strike over there, but nevertheless, let's continue towards over there that's fine and then everyone else can start to do their thing over there a Japanese strike for okay this is this is bad as you can see we are seeing for the first time here an enemy strike force here so oh Jesus <laughs> this is not great uh, we've got one G4M and six G3Ms coming in for task force 11 that's that's bad we are being spotted early here and we can't do much about that what we're going to do immediately is we're going to scramble the fighters that we've got on the deck into the air in, in a task force uh, pattern here. Sorry, in a combat air patrol pattern. Uh, that's fine. You guys are only going to take zero minutes to actually launch because you have been prepared on the runway and I think that's fine. Um, I also want to start getting you in the air, if at all possible. It's not going to... you're going to be... yeah, let's actually not do that. It's going to take 60 minutes for you to get into the air. So I don't think that's really viable for now. Let's really start by launching these guys over here. And I think that's going to be pretty tough already. But yeah, it is what it is. Good. And um, let's actually move you guys up over here. I think that's fine. Can I do that? Yeah, okay. Let's move you over here. I think that's all right. Keep you a little bit to the south. That's okay. How is Wake looking? Yeah, we've got a couple of guys landing also, so that's okay too. But yeah, very soon we're going to see uh, the search pattern being pushed out. Right, let's see what the Japanese are going to do. Yeah, they have found us. They are now on top of us. So basically the next time we do hit uh, and turn over here, we are going to see them uh, conduct their first strikes. We've got four fighters in the air. That's nice, but it's really not the best that we can do. So... Not much that I can do about this at this point, but yeah, it is what it is. Task Force 14, you are fine for now. 
I think this is okay-ish. And wake. Okay. What I want to do then here at wake is we're going to start the search pattern soon. And right after that, I think what I would like to do is also start to get these torpedo bombers ready into a torpedo formation. We could also try to arm with them with bombs, but I think torpedoes are fine. So let's try to get you ready and see whether we can do anything that uh, basically prepares for that. So that would be a very nice large strike if we can find anything. But yeah. Let's see what's going to happen over here. Let's see Let's see how the Japanese are going to be doing. And it's not great. I mean, seven Japanese fighters. It's really not great. So, we've got our first air-to-sea battle. And how this is going to go is it's going to be conducted in phases. So, the first thing that will happen is we're going to see the heavy AA of these ships that is basically trying to disrupt some of the airplanes coming in. And then we've got our defensive fighters over here flying just from the south to the north. And you can see a couple of things are being damaged over here. So we basically shot down one of these groups entirely. So basically four aircraft destroyed. Uh, we got a couple of these guys to abort their mission basically because we're just confusing them or doing a little bit of damage there. Um, but basically these guys are being uh, turned around. That does leave five heavy bombers or medium bombers um, of the Japanese. These guys have a factor of two each, so that does mean that they are not going to attack us with 10 bombs or torpedoes. And they're going to be very concentrated on the Lexington here. And they did score a hit here. It is smoking and that is just really, really not good. So, Lexington has been hit by one torpedo, it is listing, and it's damaged its propulsion. So, not great. The listing, in particular, means we can't use the Lexington for air operations for the moment. Maybe they're going to be able to do some counter-flooding, but that's not great. Also, the damaged propulsion, really not great. Oh, and we did do some more damage there against some enemy aircraft. Uh, some enemy aircraft that I think were destroyed or damaged at least but yeah this is this is really a bad 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 start so that's not great in particular you can see that these guys here um, are currently in the air and we can't land we can't land because we have the listing and you can't land on uh, a listing carrier so we need to see about whether these guys are going to survive in the air whether we can repair that damage uh, before these guys do need to land they've got some fuel so at least, at least five phases on you, um, at least 13 on you, so maybe, but yeah, it's going to be tough. How about Wake? You guys are still preparing. The first guys are starting their search pattern over here at Wake, so that's nice to see. But man, oh man, just losing, losing a carrier like that. Oh, and they're going to come in again? Well, isn't that lovely? Oh, thank you. Well, that's very nice. So we, we've got a further airstrike here. Um... The Japanese were basically trying to come in in different groups over here. We've l got less defensive fighters. I think some of them might have uh, exhausted their supplies. We can drive off one of these guys. But they're going to come in again. And... Okay, no further damage. So that's still the damage from the first time. And um, one of you guys was ban damaged. The other one uh, bought it. So the, fir the second strike here, not that horrible for us. But still. I mean, this is this is still kind of kind of hefty. Lexington being damaged over here, that's that's just really not great. And you guys cannot land, so uh, two strikes that were coming in over here. One of them fa fairly well, but the other one... Jesus. And we're not spotting anything over here, which is not a great sign, because I do think they are there, but it just means we didn't spot them. Maybe they are in a cloud, maybe they're a little bit further away, I don't know. Yeah, and you guys are going to start to to be running into a lot of trouble over here. Damage? Oh, okay, so counter flooding. So at least that we've achieved. So uh, we've achieved counter flooding over here, and that basically means you guys can all try to land over here now. That's fine. We've got four groups landing. One of you has very little fuel. One of them um, is being was damaged or disoriented as well. That's fine, you guys are going to land, uh, and I'm going to bring one of our groups into the air as soon as you have guys landed. Basically, the landing is going to take um, precedent to that. We could ask you guys to not land, 
and that might uh, just increase the timing over here but yeah for now that's gonna be all right and we've got still our guys over here in wake you guys are ready to strike whenever these people would find anyone thing is we're not finding anyone for now so mm. you guys are all right ish I would actually ask you guys to not repeat your mission if you don't need to. Let's get you under the cloud there as soon as possible. Yeah, but no ships in this entire area here. That is a little bit unfortunate. I'm not going to move you because I would like you to keep in the cloud cover as long as possible. Right, enemy scout over 14 and 11. Wait a minute. Oh, the G3M scout. Yeah, but Task Force 14 is being spotted over here. Let's try to move away from that. Um, so that potentially at least we're going to get out from there. Oh, we've got an intelligence gain here. So intelligence is telling us oh, that there is a Task Force just right next to Wake. And we're going to be able to, with, to, do, <laughs> to uh, dealing with that because we've got all of these guys covered over here, right? So let's get you guys... Uh, onto this strike, so we're going to move them into the naval box over here, and we're going to be able to select the target. You're going to be able to fly off at uh, 5 p.m. You're going to reach your target 20 minutes later, and you're going to be able to land yet 20 minutes later again. We could ask you to come in different groups, so you don't need to form up, but um, given the distances involved, I think that's not really necessary. So that is fine. You're going to try to land over there. And we could do auto targeting here. We could do an even distribution against enemy aircraft, enemy ships. Uh, but I do think I want to go for a little bit of a more compact assignment over here, so that we are targeting the most high value ships, which are either going to be carriers, or if there are no carriers, um, it's going to be transport aircraft. And I think at least 80% of these guys um, should be should be targeting that. So let's save. You know what? Let's go for 90. I think that's that's fine. So that basically everyone is going to strike. And you're going to be able to take off immediately. Yeah, at, so that's that's fine. That should be a very nice strike over here from, from our side. So that's great. By the way, you guys can uh, repeat your mission whenever you are ready. Can we strike there with our carrier? I don't think we can. The best range that we could do go for, well, we could try to strike them and then land at Wake. That might actually be a possibility over here. How about what happens if we try to set that up? So let's suppose I want you guys to be doing a naval strike. We're going to use that as a target. And we are going to do use a different return base in Wake. You're still only going to be able to land at 2020. And that is after uh, dark. And that means uh, there's a huge risk here at uh, due to the night landing. It's not that bad because you're landing at a land based on a carrier that would be much higher penalty. Uh, but still, all in all, I don't think that is something that we want to do. Uh, we're going to keep you off that mission for the time being. So on the other hand, that I think does mean that we're going to get you guys here uh, to be on combat air patrol setting so that we are ready to, to defend for the rest of the day here um, as night is approaching. Right, so you guys are all fine. You guys are still there. That's all right. Let's resume time over here. And you can see our guys are now over on top of these guys there. That's that's perfectly fine. Let's move the carriers forward a little bit here into the cloud cover. That's all right. And Task Force 11, you guys have now two aircraft in the air. So all in all, you are damaged a little bit. And you are slow, which is not great. But... At least we've got all of you guys ready to launch as soon as possible. We could try to move up a little bit and, and try to strike at this area here. But I don't think it's going to be viable. It's going to be dark and I don't want to risk our strikes there. So we're going to do, I think, an early morning strike there and that's fine. But let's see what we've got over here. So... This is the first Japanese group that we are seeing. It has three light cruisers. It has oh, six destroyers, so a pretty hefty amount of uh, light ships. And it does have two transport ships. We are coming in with one fighter um, and basically seven strike aircraft, four of them torpedo bombers, three strike aircraft. These guys are each carrying three bombs. These guys are each carrying one torpedo. 
and they are going to be very concentrated on that. So three phases, first of that is AA, heavy AA. I don't think the Japanese have a lot, so yeah, that was just one blimp over there. But not much that they are going to do over there, they don't have any air defensive fighters, so basically no interruption to us, and that's going to be very nice because we have got a lot of strike packages here coming into these two ships. I do see some damage over here and there are a lot of hits there, so that would be nice. Last third phase is as we are disengaging, these guys can shoot with their light um, AA at us, but there's not much that they're going to do. We have already sunk one of them and the other one seems to be hit at the very least. So yeah, one of them is hit by one torpedo, the other one torpedo and six bombs. This one is going down, this one is at the very least damaged and can't move as fast. So that already is very, very nice indeed. Well, you guys can move up a little bit. You guys could move up there, but we don't have a movement point, so that's all right. Let's look at Wake now. I think you should, uh, you guys should start to see these guys landing, that's all right. And you guys are gonna come back in a short while. You guys are all gonna be ready in case we spot another enemy uh, air group that is gonna come in. Don't think there is gonna be any, but let's see. Right, and then let's see whether we can do another strike here from Wake. So you guys have now basically all landed. Um, let's see whether we can do another strike um, at these ships over here. Yeah, you're going to be, since they are now on top of you basically, you're going to be able to, to turn around immediately. Now this is going to take you 60 minutes, which is not a short time. Um, and if we add more units to that, well, that's only at these guys because I think that's, that's all right here. It's going to take a while, 60 minutes, because you've not been prepared and we're going to ask you to turn around immediately. But still, still I think that is going to be a, a nice try over here. And I want to advance, I know we are running a little bit um, on, on a very long time over here, but that's fine. Oh, Lexington has their propulsion restored, that's lovely to see. And actually uh, the coastal defences at Wake uh, did hit one of these destroyers with one shell, that's lovely to see. Uh, it's not a big deal, but still nice to see you guys also starting to come a little bit closer to Wake here. So that's perfectly fine. Oh, I should have moved you into the cloud cover there. But yeah, Lexington being basically repaired over here is very good news. So that is very, very lovely indeed. Oh, look at that. You guys are withdrawing over there. Yeah, we've uh, lost some intel actually. That's uh, unfortunate, but not, not the worst. Okay, let's see whether we can get another strike here. I think at 1920, these guys were supposed to launch. This is probably just one of you guys landing. How about you guys? Okay, you're start gonna start now, so that should be all right. Nothing else to be done over there, nothing down there. It's only gonna be a couple of minutes of daylight left, but you are gonna attack here, and that is very, very nice to see. Good, so coming in with the second attack over here, and there's one thing that I didn't do, which I should have done, and that is um, I, I don't want you to only target this ship. It's basically been wasted already, but now all of our seven ships are going to come into there, at least if none is disturbed by that little AA. Not much. Yeah, all of our ships are going to come into this. They are very likely to sink it, though. I would certainly hope, at least. Yeah, it is sunk. And that is just... Oh, actually, we did hit one of these. No, that was um, the ground defense, so yeah. I think this is one more torpedo and four bombs, so basically you go down. That's very, very lovely to see. And our heroes are now returning to base. It is a bit of an issue because they are now returning at night, so they might be taking some losses there, uh, but it's not the worst. And as night falls, I think this is a very good place to put in a cut. So the first day of our operations here did sink a couple of cargo ships. That's a huge win over here because these guys are, I think, not going to bother us anymore. Um, and that was very, very nice indeed here uh, that we did uh, that we were able to repel them uh, by sending in our forces like that. Lexington, a little bit less lucky, but at least it was able to um, conduct some operations there. So it is still afloat and it's it's somewhat damaged, but it's not the worst actually. So it's can do its air operations, so that's fine. We didn't lose any aircraft, I believe. Not even on Task Force 11, I think. Lexington, of course, was the one that was uh, taking damage there. 
But yeah, that's fine. Hope you did enjoy. Uh, do leave a like and all of that, especially on the first one over here. Um, and do uh, let me know what you think about this game. I think it's very, very interesting. Bye-bye, guys.